Hey everybody, it's Matthew Seville here with SLRLounge.com and in this video, I am going to help you get through an emergency battery situation. Maybe you're shooting a super, super long day and you thought you came prepared with a lot of batteries, but for some reason, they're just all starting to run low. So how do you get your camera to last through that really long day? I have for you today, seven tips. All right, so let's jump right into this. The first tip is to turn off all of your wireless connection options. Cameras these days have more and more things, Wi-Fi, GPS, NFC, Bluetooth. I don't even know, there's so many bells and whistles out there now. My point is you could be wasting a lot of battery power and you don't even know it because you've got this newfangled camera. Thankfully on Sony, actually, the mirrorless cameras, they have a new, they have so many different features that they just put an airplane mode on the camera, like your phone. So that's awesome. You turn on airplane mode on a Sony camera and you're good to go with all of those Wi-Fi or wireless connections turned off. Thank you, Sony, for that. On Canon and Nikon, unfortunately, you're gonna have to look into the menus figure out which wireless connection options your camera has and make sure that you're only turning those on when you actually need them. Okay, tip number two is to turn off your camera's stabilization options. Now this might be a no brainer because cameras really, really waste power on stabilization. Your lenses or your in-sensor stabilization but unfortunately, you, you're probably thinking, well, I paid so much money for this lens or whatever, I need my stabilization. Unfortunately, you got yourself into this mess with a low battery power, you might have to take drastic measures to get yourself out of this mess. But I do still have some other tips for you. Turn off your stabilization for your widest angle lenses. There's wide zooms, medium range zooms. Even now there's stabilization on prime lenses and you really might be able to get through your day without that. On your 70 to 200, I understand you're shooting at a longer telephoto focal length. You might need stabilization still on, but consider maybe either turning that off if it's broad daylight, or if you're in low light, grab your 85 1.4 prime or something, and you'll regain that low light, fast shutter speed shooting capability that way. You might have to get a little bit closer to the action, but it's really not the end of the world, and you'll save a ton of battery life if your stabilization is turned off. Next is sensor cleaning. This is an option that I usually leave on all the time. I set my cameras to turn, uh, to clean the sensor every time the camera turns on and turns off. This is an option on both Canon, Nikon, and Sony, I think. You can turn this option off all the way and save a lot of battery power, or at least a little battery power, and it, your sensor won't get terribly dirty right away if you turn off this feature. So that's a pretty good option to save a little bit of battery life. Okay, moving on, your camera's LCD playback or image review. Every time you click a picture, I like to have that image show up on the back of my camera, but if I'm in a pinch, I'll turn that feature off. You could also just set it to the minimum time. Sometimes there's a two second or a five second option and that'll save battery power con compared to having your camera's LCD just on all the time. Uh, but if you're in a real pinch, you can just turn it off altogether. Also, as a side note on Nikon, you can also set the menus to also turn off quickly. There's timer delays on pretty much every single thing that you could do on a Nikon camera, including your metering as well, actually. All right, the next option is related to this. Your camera LCD brightness, you can also turn that down if your camera LCD is on. On Canon and Nikon and Sony, you can turn it down to negative two, negative three, Nikon goes all the way down to negative five. And if you have mastered the use of your histogram, like we've taught in Photography 101 and other tutorials, you can gauge your exposure even if the brightness of your LCD is turned way down. You might not be able to turn it all the way down in bright sunlight, but especially if you're at, towards the end of a day in a wedding reception indoors, you can turn it down to negative three or negative four or whatever and save a ton of battery power. And if you're using your histogram, like I said, you can still nail your exposures. 
the next tip is a little bit of an older tip, but it's still useful, and that is to turn your camera all the way off in between shots. Again, I know this is a no-brainer, but actually cameras these days are pretty efficient at saving battery power, even if you do leave them on. It used to be a real big issue five, ten years ago. You would want to turn your camera off all the time because it gobbled up more battery power. The metering, the metering will turn off on Canon and Nikon, and they're pretty good at conserving battery power. But if you have all, if you're following all the other tips, like like I said, turning off your sensor cleaning, you, if you're walking from point A to point B, or if you're going to spend more than one or two minutes without clicking pictures, just turn your camera all the way off. Obviously, that'll save the most amount of battery power compared to all the other tips. All right, folks, we made it to the very last tip, and that is a tip for all the people out there who have been shooting for years or shooting full time, just shooting tens or hundreds of thousands of photos. My tip is to keep track of your battery life, the battery overall health, and replace or retire batteries as necessary. Now, when I'm shooting a long day, I'm shooting full time professionally as a wedding photographer, so I have numbered every single one of my batteries. And what I'll do is, Towards the end of the day, when it says, oh, I'm down to whatever, the battery life warning comes on in the camera, I'll look on the menu and it will say, there's an option on most cameras that'll say, you've shot 1,000 photos or 1,100 photos and you're down to 10%. Now, if I check this often enough on all of my batteries, whenever I'm shooting, I'll immediately know as soon as it says, hey, you've shot four or 500 photos and you're down to 2% or 3%, immediately I know. Make a note, mark that battery, and if it happens again, it's time to retire that particular battery. Now, if you shoot video, those numbers might be totally different, but you can do the same procedure, get in the same habit, and you'll be able to detect when you need to retire this or that battery. Usually for me, it's at the two or three year mark, and hopefully you might never find yourself in a dire situation when you need to use all of these tips in the first place. So that's about it. Thank you all for tuning in and we will catch you next time.